in her front yard, playing in the dirt with an old brass spoon. She was wearing a red and white checkered dress. It was long. It was early spring, as she was barefoot. She could not see the man who came riding down Liberty Street wearing a duster that draped over the back of his horse. She could not see him until he came and untied his horse, and tied his horse, and untied the carpet bag that was on his horse. She watched him now as he came through the wooden gate. She knew him. Her mother called him Mr. Herder. And she had told Jenny that this was her father. And he stood looking down at her. He was one of the men who came riding down the dirt road of Liberty Street and would disappear into one of the houses on that street. Now, no man lived on Liberty Street. Only women and children lived on Liberty Street. <coughs> and all the women were Negroes. All the women were very, very beautiful. Her mother was light. She was tall with dark eyes and black hair so long she could sit on it. But Jenny looked up at him, and Mr. Herder came to their house once or twice a week. And he was thin and tall, blonde. His eyes were blue, just like Jenny's. And her mother had told her that he had grown up overseas in a foreign land, like Europe or something like that. So he didn't speak very good English. So he looked down at her and said, Jenny, your mother tells me that you want to know why I do not stay. Is so? Yes, Mr. Herder. <laughs> well, go get your mother. I stay now. Jenny dropped that brass spoon in the dirt and she ran up the stairs through the hall to the kitchen where her mother was at the stove. She was wearing a long black skirt and a white blouse. Mama, Mama, that, that man, my, my father, he in the yard. He brought a carpet bag with him. A carpet bag, my darling? Yes, Mama, a carpet bag. Well, together they went out to the porch where Mr. Herder was sitting on that porch with that carpet bag next to him. And he turned around and he said, I stay now. I don't go back. Why do I have to come here to know what love really is? I will not go back. In fact, I will give her that house, I will send her money, but I stay here now. After that, Jenny's mother became a celebrity on Liberty Street. <laughs> the woman would stop and ask her. They would go, Josie, is he here to stay? Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you had any trouble yet? Oh, no. Well, you remember what happened to Sissy Markham and her children? The day he died, that white woman come and put them out in the gutter. You make sure he put that house in your name. You hear me? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Tell me, is it different? What's it like? Oh, it's different, all right. He wants me to call him by his first name. He wants me to call him Maynard. The women were amazed. And so was Jenny. She was always surprised because now he was there every morning that she woke up. She began to realize this man really is my father. And she began to call him Papa. Daily now, a gray buggy with a white woman in it, pulled by a gray horse, 
with a legal driver driving the buggy would come by the house. And it was slow as it got in front of it. And the woman would peer at the house. And then she would see Jenny. And she would look at Jenny, not with tenderness and kindness, but she would look with a hard expression, like she knew something bad about that child. One day, the buggy stopped. And the white woman handed a pink envelope to the driver. And he jumped down, he opened up the wooden gate, went up the porch, and he pulled the bell pull. Jenny's mother came to the door, and she reached out and took that envelope. And the woman in the buggy, she leaned forward, and she said, you, you something different. You, he only got one. You, mm -mm, you something different. And she just flicked her hand and the buggy was off. Jenny dropped that brass spoon in the dirt and she ran up those steps and she said, Mama! And the mother said, Not now, Jenny! Oh, not now! Oh, not now, go play! And her mother closed the door. Well, Jenny, every night, she waited at the wooden gate for her father to come walking down the street. And this night, it was no different. She saw him coming. And then he would wave. And he would get close to her and say, oh my Jenny, how are you doing today? How did your day go? A woman come, she made mama cry. Oh, it's so, well, we must find out what's wrong. And he took Jenny by the hand and walked up the steps to the porch, through the hallway, down to the kitchen, where Jenny's mother was walking from the pump to the stove to the cupboard, to the pump to the stove and the cupboard in a day. Jenny saw that her mother's eyes were red. There is nothing she could say that will make me go back. And he picked up the letter and he read it. He took it over to the stove and he dropped it into the flame and it disappeared in a puff of smoke. I will not go back. But Maynard, Maynard, she's white. I will not go back. Your skin is whiter than hers. But Maynard, my mother was a slave. She did not ask to be a slave. I will not go back. Maynard, she's white. She could get the white man to do anything she asked them to do. And she looked at Jenny, and she looked away. You weren't here after the war. Oh, they did terrible things to the Negroes in the field. Oh, I was there and I saw what they did and they didn't bother me because I was part of the house. But my own father, General Dewey Wilson, he got up on the platform in the town square and he promised to keep the Negroes down and they did. And, and, and she looked at him and looked away. Oh, Maynard, leastways, just, just, just go back. No, if I go back, I go back dead. You hear me, I go back dead. And he leaves in anger and goes upstairs. Oh, Jenny, Jenny, come to mama, come to mama, Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Do you know that when you get older, you're going to be so beautiful? <laughs> look at you, my child. Just look at you. Promise me this. Promise me this. When you get to be 18, you're going to go up to the north and you're going to get married. You understand? Go to the north and get married. And if I'm not here, you still go to the north and get married. You understand? Well, Jenny could not picture what the 
the north was. She heard that it was cold and white things fell from the sky. She could not picture being 18 or her mother not being there. But she knew it was important to her mother that she understand her. So she lied and said, yes, mama, I understand. Oh, Jenny, repeat what I just said to you. And she did. And then her mother kissed her in the mouth for the very first time. A few mornings after that, Jenny woke up to the sound of voices downstairs. And she could hear her father's voice, hard and decisive, and she knew he had made up his mind and was not going to change it. Jenny got up and put on her Sunday best because this was the 4th of July, and her father had promised to take her to the town square for the shooting match. She went on downstairs. Oh, don't take that child and dare. Don't take that child with you to I take her. I take her. I made up my mind. I will take her. Oh, don't do it. And Jenny realized that her mother felt that there'd be trouble if she took, if she went to the shooting match with her father. And she thought about it. They used to go to the market every day. But then something happened where when they would go, it would totally get quiet. And then there'd be a group of white men who would look at them and laugh. But the people who scared Jenny the most were the white woman dressed in fine clothing. They looked at her mother as if she had done something personally bad to each one of them. And now, their groceries were brought to them by a crippled Negro boy. Well, a little while later, Jenny was walking down Liberty Street, hand in hand with her papa. She felt so good. And when they got downtown, everything was different. There was a platform in the middle of the town square, and the streets had been roped off, and there were cotton bales at the end of the streets with targets on them. And all the men were coming up to her father and clapping him on the back and saying, you're the best shot in the state. I know you're going to win the shooting match today. He was so popular, unlike her mother. It was time for the shooting match. And everybody took their shots. And the judge come running down the line. Ooh, man, oh, the you got to cover each one of his bullets with one glob of spit. <laughs> and he ushered Maynard Herder up onto the platform where Jenny saw an old man with gray hair and a gray beard sitting there wearing a gray uniform trimmed in yellow. The old man stood up and he gave a short speech and he handed Jenny's father, a blue velvet box with a silver medal in it. And Jenny's father turned and looked at her and smiled, and Jenny smiled back. And everyone around the platform clapped and hollered and cheered, and then they began to disperse. And her father began to come down the steps towards her, but the old man put his arm around him first, and he said, Maynard, I ain't no meddler, but you know, I used to have a woman down there on Liberty Street before the war, you know. I know that. But Maynard, what you're doing is different. I stay there. I don't go back. But Maynard, I've been able to hold back a lot of folk. But there's a certain element here of men that I cannot hold back. And their talk is turning really ugly. And he looked at Jenny, and he looked away. You know 
she be my only granddaughter. You tell them, I killed them dead. Just like I did to that target, I'll put a bullet right here. I killed them dead. If anyone comes near her or my house, I kill them. But Maynard, that won't do no good after they've hurt her. Maynard, pistols and rifles are good for many things, but they don't make good doctors. Jenny's father turned away and came down the steps and grabbed Jenny's hand and they walked fast away from the square. And as they came close to another park, they slowed down and the father went in and sat on the bench. And Jenny, she sat next to him, feeling the cool breeze from the gulf coming onto her cheeks, watching the seagulls and the birds. And her father's face that was really red as blood was now clear. <clears throat> and across the park, she saw a group of men, a group of white men who were dressed really poorly. They were the kind of men that her mama told her not to play with, not to talk to, and not to get around. But one of them was smiling at her, and the others were laughing at him. And then he took a brown rag doll from behind his back, and he held it by his legs, and he pulled it apart and ripped it. And then he put his finger in the rip. Papa! Papa! What's that man doing? Where? Where? There, Papa! And the man did it again. I kill you! I kill you dead if you come near her! I kill you! I kill you! I kill you! But they just... <laughs> I cannot kill everybody. I cannot kill them all. I cannot kill them all. I cannot kill them all. Oh. Jenny. And he thrust the blue velvet box in her hand. Your mother told you to go north when you get old enough. You must do what she says. You understand? Yes, Papa. Take this and take it with you. Know that I've always been with you and take it with you wherever you go. Yes, Papa. Jenny. You're gonna have to go home alone. Tell your mother that I will come later. Jenny left and went home. And that night, while she, she went to bed, and she wanted to wait up to feel her father's kiss on her forehead. But the next thing you know, the sun was shining through her windows. And she got dressed and went downstairs. And she and her mother ate their breakfast in silence. Afterwards, Jenny went to the wooden gate to watch for the gray buggy and for that white woman to come down the road like she done every day. But for the first time in many months, really since early spring, that buggy did not come down the road. Mm -hmm.